Okay, so this video, <clears throat> we're going to explain how to do the wind's <clears throat> corrections and find the true heading with a wind correction angle using the wind side of the E6B. Uh, so first things first, a couple things to explain real quick. This is the wind side. Uh, there's two ways we can manipulate this. So the inner circle, we can spin around, as you see here. There's a true index way up top. And then also, in addition to being able to spin the inside of this, we can actually move the speeds behind it. So we're going to do all that stuff in order to determine a wind correction angle left or right based on the winds aloft. And also we're going to eventually find a ground speed as well. Uh, so provided that we know certain data, we can actually uh, yield uh, some other data. So I've got just some examples here um, and we're just going to run some numbers to do some examples of this and show you step by step how to do it. The instructions are listed at the top of most of these E6, uh, E6B flight computers. So for our first true course, uh, let's see, <clears throat> I'm just going to say true course 300. Uh, we're going to say the winds are out of, uh, let's say 180 at 20 knots. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I didn't provide it, but a true airspeed is also going to be required. So on my table here, <clears throat> true airspeed, let's say, is 100 knots. So we're going to need those three pieces of data. And once we have those three, we should then be able to determine wind correction angle left or right to find our true heading. And then also find out how fast we're going over the ground. Because our speed through the air could be 100 knots. That's great. But we need to determine ground speed to determine uh, estimated time en route and fuel burn, fuel requirements. So how do we do this with the wind side of the E6B? We've got instructions up top and we'll just go step by step. Um, another thing to note before we begin, in the center of our instrument here is a hole and that's gonna be what they refer to as the center. When it says center, this is what it means. So first things first, it says step one to set our wind direction under true index. So let's refer to this wind direction 180. So we're going to move so we see 180 under the true index, which should be south. And that's step one. <clears throat> For step two, this one's harder. It says to mark the wind velocity up from center point. So all we do here is we find our center point. It looks like I've got mine set around 160. This is the center point. We're going to use a pencil and go straight up however many units our wind speed is. So from the center point up, however strong the winds are. And our winds are at 20 knots. So 160 it's currently at. We, it doesn't matter where you start. So as long as you go 20 straight up, it's going to do it correctly. So you could go down to 150. You could start at 160. As long as you go 20 units straight up in the direction of the winds, it'll work out. So I went 160. So 170 would be 10. 180 would be 20. And so make a nice solid mark there. That's our wind dot, as it's going to refer to it here in just a moment, uh, with a pencil, because you're going to be making a lot of these and erasing them. Um, so we've done number two. Number three asks us to set our true course now under the true index. So our true course we should already have determined. I just used a random number here, 300. So now we're going to roll our true course to match our true index. Our true course 300. Roll it around under the true index. And that would be step three. Uh, step four, slide the wind velocity mark to our true air speed. So notice our wind mark had moved down here. And now we're going to slide until that mark is over the true air speed, which was provided before. So slide this up and down until that dot is over one of these arcs corresponding to a true air speed. Our air speed, true air speed for our example is 100. So we're going to slide it till the 100 arc is by our wind dot, which is right about there. So after that step, after step four, the dot should be left and it should be right along that 100 knot um, true airspeed mark. And we're finished manipulating this. All we're left to do is to interpret what's shown to us according to the directions. So step five tells us ground speed reads under center. Remember that's the hole in the middle. And you might not be able to see, but with it set properly, the hole in our middle is about right here. Uh, so ground speed is about 109 knots. And we can make a note of that. True air speed is 100. We have a little bit of a tailwind here. Our ground speed is 109 knots. Tailwinds, always good things. Uh, so we've got our ground speed from, uh, from step 5. Step 6 says wind correction reads 
between center line and wind velocity mark. So this is fairly simple as well. We've got our true course set, 300. Notice it's left of center here. So we're gonna have to have a left correction. Uh, and, and officially, if you look at these numbers, you'll see there's five degrees, there's 10. So because it's left and it's 10, we need a minus 10 or a 10 degree wind correction to the left. And that makes a lot of sense up here as well. If it's 300 minus 10, it's gonna end up yielding a true heading of 290. So this shows a 10 degree left wind correction. 10 degrees, I always like to write minus 10 left just to make sure I do this properly. We just apply that to our original true course to come up with a true heading now, adjusted for winds of 290 degrees. So from our original three pieces of data, true course, winds, and true airspeed, we yield these three values, and we're gonna practice this a lot in class. And that's how you use your wind side to determine wind correction, true heading, and uh, ground speed on the E6B.